Hello, and welcome to episode seven of the Focus Lounge Podcast. I'm your host, Reen Diane, and I just want to take a moment to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for following this journey. Today's episode is going to be the blame game and why we love pointing a finger. I want to start with what does it really mean to play the blame game? To me, the blame game is, you know, like when we have a tendency to not take responsibility for ourselves. A lot of times we will, you know, like pretty much if we're dealing with a particular situation or problem, instead of taking personal accountability for it, we will allow somebody else to take the fall for us. And a lot of times, you know, there's some kind of psychological reason behind that. And sometimes the reasoning behind that is just simply the fact that we don't want to face our flaws or mistakes. Or perhaps we don't want to look bad, you know. And we'll explore a little bit deeper, but one of the first things that I want to start out with that took place in time, and it's an example that's been around for centuries and probably the very first blame game that took place. And you probably already know the story of Adam and Eve. You know, when confronted about eating a forbidden fruit, what did Adam do? He blamed Eve. I mean, this is a classic example of our tendencies to deflect and avoid taking responsibility for our actions. A lot of times we feel bad deep down inside, but our outward appearance show differently because we know how to put that game face on. But for some reason, we just love pointing the finger and we have to get out of that. Another example that I want to share with you, and I'm certain you may be familiar with the song, Uh, by Deborah Cox, How Did You Get Here? And during that song, even though it's about love and guarding your heart, and throughout her lyrics, it's like, you know, how did you get here? You're not supposed to be here, you know, because she tried that love thing for the last time. And she talked about her heart saying no, no, and things of that nature. But I want us to flip that song to how did you get here? You know, how did you get to your situation? What is your you? You know, a lot of times we find ourselves in a place and we know how it came about, but we are in a place of denial, if you will. And so what I want to share with you is that sometimes we have a hard time admitting our faults. And maybe you deal with the same situation that I'm speaking of. Do you point your finger rather than accepting the blame? or taking responsibility for your actions. I'm going to go back to Deborah Cox's song. And like I said, we're going to look at our you. How did you get to the place that you are in life? Especially if you're in an unhappy place. For myself, I'm guilty. And one thing you know that I share on here is my own story, my own experience. During a time of my marriage, I became very unhappy and I wanted out of the situation. You know, some people say what you don't know can't hurt you, but that's a lie. Because had I known what I was doing would put me in a position that I'm in now, I would have never done it. And what I mean by that is I wanted to become less attractive to my spouse because 
I just didn't want to be there anymore. Because how I got there was allowing other people to get in my head, if you will. And what I mean by that, you know, looking at your age, you're getting older, you're going to be by yourself, this, that, and the third. But I was happy by myself. And it's okay to be by yourself. But I was letting things get in the way, those words. At one time in my life, I used to worry too much about what people think. And so my point of trying to become less attractive, I decided that I was going to put on weight, not knowing that it was detrimental to my health. Why? Because I became obese. I became stressed out. And these things led to my type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and my depression that I was dealing with at the time. And that's the reason why I'm saying my ignorance is leading me to empowerment, if you will. I don't want other people making these same mistakes. So is this something that you should take as far as my words of advice and follow it for your own medical means? No, it's just my testimony, my story. And it's just something that is educational, if you will. But the point is that we have to be careful of the things that we are doing to ourselves. We are causing the harm to our own bodies. I had no idea where type 2 diabetes came from. I didn't even think it would touch me. Why? Because of some fact that it didn't run in my family. Not my immediate family that I'm aware of. Everything is not a genetic. Some things we bring on ourselves. So I started pointing the finger at, I got here because I was unhappy in my marriage. Even if I was unhappy in my marriage, there was a solution to the problem. What is that solution? Get a divorce. Don't be like me, hanging there for 16 years. For what? Because being a Christian, God hates divorce. Well, God don't put every relationship together either. See, when we are too busy worrying about what people think, we begin to stress ourselves out. And we begin to end up getting caught up into things that we do not want a part of our lives. So I am now on this 12-week challenge. It's a journey for myself because it can be reversed. Type 2 diabetes can be reversed. This hypertension can be reversed. Why or how? Because all I have to do is take the proper measures that will reverse it creating a healthy lifestyle for myself, eating the right foods, stop worrying so much. If you can agree with that, drop a heart down there. Stop worrying so much. We worry ourselves to death, but we have to take accountability for our actions. I can't point the finger at nobody else. And there's a saying that when you're pointing your finger at somebody, Look, your thumb is pointing right back at you. I'm taking a blame for where I'm at. Why? Because I didn't have to open my mouth and eat that food. Lack of sleep. I'm going to tell you, I did not know how important sleep was. If you don't get the right amount of sleep, it's going to kill us. We got to get our rest. Every time I go to my doctor visit, more and more and more and more medication is being added. And I'm like, what is working? Tell me, please. Because this is driving me crazy. I'm up to 10 different medications, but you can't tell me which one is helping my situation? No. I'm not going to be your guinea pig. I trusted the process, but now I'm going to trust God. Because God gave us five senses. We got common sense to stop doing some of the things we do. And I don't know why we keep falling behind foolishness. We have to get to a place in life where we realize the problem. And I said it before. If you keep stuffing stuff in your mouth and you're getting bigger, it's nobody's fault but yours. 
If you keep going to the bar and you saying you're giving up alcohol, but you continue to go to the bar and you feel pressure to take a drink, get your tail out the bar. Cigarettes, stop buying them. If you don't want to smoke, stop smoking. Some things are common sense, and yes, some things are hard to do once you get started. But the key thing is, how much do you really love yourself? How much responsibility are you going to take for yourself? When are you going to stop pointing the finger at everybody else? It's all about accountability. Accountability. So like I said, I played that song that Deborah Cox had out, boy. I would play it every Saturday when I was cleaning the house. And this time around, when I would hear my heart says no, no, it's saying no because of the fact that I learned to love me. I learned to know how important I am. You know, it's funny. We act a fool on our job sometimes and think we're invincible. But that wake up call comes when they tell you, turn in your badge and you trying to figure out why. Well, you know why. Don't let your counterparts put in your head that you all that because I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, you're not all that. Take responsibility for yourself. Stop blaming people for what's going on in your life. There's consequences when we play the blame game. You know, society as a whole, man, <laughs> you, I'm telling you, you mess up if you want to. You're going to have a handful of people willing to stick by you while you blame somebody else. But as soon as that finger get pointed at those other people, they're going to turn on you. Resentment is going to happen. You got to be careful. Because not only will people start resenting you, you're going to have resentment for yourself. You're not even going to want to function anymore. We cannot continue to find satisfaction in blaming other people for the things we have going on in life. We just can't do it. We have to find another means. I'm going to tell you, journaling has become my best friend. Because when you write stuff down, and you see it and you read it, it really speaks truth to you. I, I have a checklist, and I may end up sharing it with you all, and you can download it for free, but I have a checklist that I go through on this 12-week challenge that I'm going on to make certain that I'm holding myself accountable for me. We can't always have a person there. You know, we have to depend on ourselves sometimes. We can't look to other people to tell us if it's okay, tell us if it's good enough. You got to get to a place where you know it's good enough or you know it's okay. Or if it's something bad, don't do it. That's something you have to do. And we have to analyze our role when it comes down to social media. Sometimes, you know, social media contributes to the blame game in our culture. What do I mean by that? I watch a lot of the kids, you know, I teach middle school and I watch a lot of the children get into this, um, I think they're TikTok challenges. One of them, um, I think it was eating hot chips or what have you. Well, a lot of kids are doing the hot chips, getting sick. 
Now, who do the parents blame? TikTok. You can't blame TikTok. If we spend more time monitoring our kids rather than social media monitoring our children, we would be in a whole better place. A whole better place. And then when it comes down to social media, we share some of the dumbest stuff. Stop sharing foolishness. Share something positive today. Make up in your mind today that you're going to share positive stuff. The dumb stuff, leave it alone. Because somebody can be foolish enough to try what you're sharing that's dumb. Leave it alone. But we have to look at different strategies that can help us break this blame game mentality. I mean, we have to, oh man, we have to look at, you know, self-reflection and start taking action. Like I said, you know, let people that we talk to, if they happen to see something in us and they say something, let's not get mad at people. Let's go back and examine ourselves. Have that one-on-one with yourself. Even if it means talking to you, self, how did you get here? And write it down. Analyze your situation. I'm going to share another real cute <laughs> situation when my, my daughter, Jessica, and my niece, Jade, I think they were hmm, maybe three and four. We had one on this little picnic and Jade, my niece, had knocked over the drink. So I saw who did it. And, and I'm sharing this story because I just want you to see how young of an age that pointing the finger and the blame game begins. So the drink spills over on the picnic blanket. And I said, who spilled that drink? Immediately. My niece pointed and said, Jessica? And Jessica sat there and said, "Uh uh-uh. Like, you're not blaming me for this. And then I asked the question again. I said, who spilled this drink? She pointed again, Jessica? Jessica was like, nah, not me. I didn't do this. So I challenged the situation in a way to see, are you blaming Jessica because you're scared you're going to get in trouble? So the third time that I asked, who spilled the drink? You're not going to get in trouble. She admitted to it. And I'm saying that to say sometimes we got to be careful of, and I'm not saying my niece had fear in her from anybody. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is we got to be careful of how we communicate with our children. And the reason being is because they're not going to own up to stuff. Because you can't whoop a child out of line. You have to train them up. So in my household with my daughters, I used to tell them, hey, you break a glass, ain't nobody in this house but me and you. If I didn't break it, then guess what? I know who broke the glass. So I explained to them, honesty is the best policy with me. We'll go far in life. Just be honest with me. I can't stand somebody to lie to me in my face, especially when I see someone. And they staring at me, looking at me in my face and lying to me. I cannot stand that. But my point is, you guys, I'm going to wrap it up here because (laughs) I'm getting carried away. But I, I just want you guys to know my point is stop playing the blame game. Stop pointing a finger and start taking accountability for yourself, for your actions. But the one main thing that I want you to do is sit down with you and figure out how did you get here? If you're in a situation you don't want to be in, I want you to have a real talk with yourself and figure out, How did you get here? 
Because sometimes we're not supposed to be in a situation, but we can't see the forest for that tree. We stand in our own way. We get stuck and we start playing the blame game. Hey, you guys, this is the end of episode seven. I thank you for tuning in. And remember, thank you for following the journey. Continue to be blessed. And whatever you do, stop pointing the finger. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and also on YouTube. Remember, Focus Lounge Podcast. Subscribe today. Thank you for tuning in.